How much should you pay when you are transferring your property? Welcome back to Real Estate in Kenya with Ruben Kimani. I'm back. Today we are talking about capital gain tax. This capital gain tax is a topic that has been there in Kenya. People have been discussing about it. But I know the discussion about housing levy, which we might cover in future topics, is something that everyone is discussing and the finance bill of, I think, 2023. It's a high topic. It's a heated up topic. We are not going to discuss that today. Let me talk about how capital gain tax affect your real estate investments. There are so many taxes in Kenya and of course in the world that affect real estate uh, investments. We have the biggest which is stamp duty. All of us they pay stamp duty. Interesting if for using an investment. We do that on your behalf because we want to make your life easier. We have other taxes like value added taxes. We have income tax. We have property rates. Uh, we have withholding tax, development levy, excise duty among his many others. I think these duties and taxes are familiar to you, but today our discussion is about capital gain tax. How much should you pay when you are transferring your property? We'd like to teach you about four things. First, tell you what is capital gain tax, because some of you tuning in today may not have an idea or a good idea what capital gain tax is all about. What is the current rate that you should pay capital gain tax? Number three, how does it affect your real estate investment? And lastly, exemption to capital gain tax that you need to be aware of as an individual. As an investor, like I said, investment in knowledge is extremely important. The first thing you do before you even get money is to invest in knowledge. And I believe that is why you are tuned in to real estate in Kenya with Ruben Kimani. So what is capital gain tax? In simple terms, is, this is tax that is imposed when you are transferring your property. The Biscay try to identify how much the property has gained. This is a tax, especially in our country, that was imposed for properties acquired or before January of 2015. The laws keep changing. And this tax is declared by the transferrer of the property. What is the current rate that you should pay? For a long time or for some many years, since the amendment of the Finance Act, it has been 5%. But from January of 2023, according to the Finance Act of 2022, the capital gain tax was increased from 5 to 15%. So it has been 5% for some time, but now it was increased threefold to 15%. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I leave you for you to decide and for you to tell us what you think about these tax. It's one of the tasks about properties. The other thing I wanted to teach you about is how it is calculated. This is like math. I'm going to touch about a lot of some technical terms just for your own basic understanding. But when you use a lawyer or when you come to use a name investment, we do these things for you. You just need a basic understanding the rest will be done to you by companies and professionals like us. That's why we are companies that take care of your needs. You don't need to bombard yourself with vocabularies, terms about law and government. You just need basic understanding. So there's a formula that saying they try to calculate the net gain. This guy from how it is very basic. You sell a property today, you bought a property 10 years ago. You, you sell it at 2 million, you bought at maybe 300,000. The difference is 2 million minus 300,000. Then they tax the 2 million minus 300,000. That is about 1.7 million. That's what they tax at 15%. But it's not that simplistic. That is for your own understanding because they are giving that 1.7 million is like a net gain, which is calculated as follows. The transfer value at the point when you are selling minus all the incident cost of the transfer, the money you use when you are transferring that property, minus the adjusted cost. This is basically the cost in which you acquired the property, uh, plus all the costs that were there when you are acquiring the property. You may have incurred valuation costs, you have, may have incurred transfer costs and stamp duty at that point. You add all those costs. Basically, 
you put all the costs when you are transferring the property, how you sold it, the lawyer fees, the and all those things, minus how you bought the property many years ago, plus the legal fees and all those things. I'm doing this for your own understanding. So it is the net gain which will be taxed at 15% is the transfer value minus the adjusted cost. And I've been able to explain what this meaning means in layman's language. If I use very technical terms, please forgive me. We are trying to explain this. And we have this article. You have this uh, in our blog section of our website. If you want to be able to understand more, go to usernameproperties.com. Go to our blogs. You'll be able to find this content as it is for your own understanding. There are exemptions number three to capital gains tax you need to be aware about. I'm going to read them very, very fast. And you can check whether you have some exemption because there are, there are some exemption that you can take advantage of. Knowledge is power when applied. Every time you have knowledge about investment, about taxes, about life, about religion, about anything in life, about marriages, relationship, or aspect, about health, you are able to move much faster. You work smarter. You work with what works instead of beating around the bush. These are exemptions to capital gain tax you need to be aware about as an individual. Number one, when you transfer property for the purposes of securing a debt, or a loan in a financial institution, you are exempt from capital gain tax. When a creditor is transferring a property for the purposes of returning property used as security for a debt for a, for a loan, I think this is at the point when you are charging. Number three, transfer of personal representative of any property to a person or a beneficiary in the course of administration of the estate of a deceased person, in the course of succession. Number four, exemption to capital gain taxes, the transfer of asset between spouses or between former spouses as part of divorce settlement or bona fide separation uh, agreements. So in case these are divorce and spouses are sharing property, you are exempt from capital gain tax. Number five, which other situation are you exempt? Transfer of asset to immediate family or company where spouses or a spouse or immediate family hold 100% shareholding. If you, are, if you are transferring a property maybe to, uh, to a brother and the shareholding is 100%, you're exempt from capital gain tax. Number six, again, on the transfer of securities, these are shares traded on any security exchange listed by the Capital Markets Authority. Number seven, the sale of a deceased uh, person property for the purposes of administering the estate of the deceased provided the sale is completed within two years of the death of the deceased. These are terms. You can go to our website and keep checking them, keep listening to these videos. Number eight, compensation for land compulsory acquired by the government for infrastructure development. By the way, there are projects in our list where the government, is, we see that our projects are on the highways, on tarmacs and stuff like that. They are projects that are acquired by government for the purposes of maybe doing a development. We have one project in our company where that is happening. So in that case, you don't pay capital gain tax. Number nine, agricultural property that is less than 100 acres. This is another one, interesting one. Where the property is situated outside a municipality or gazetted township or urban areas. If your property, if your property is agricultural and it's less than 100 acres and it's situated outside a municipality or a gazetted township or an urban area, you are exempt from capital gain tax. Number 10 is residential houses that are owner occupied for a period of three years preceding disposal. That is also another very interesting one. Number 11 is gains on transfer of property at the a transaction involving uh, recapitalization, acquisition, amalgamation, dissolution, or any other restructuring of the corporate identity of a company that is found to be in the public interest. That is a very big statement uh, with very big words that are used in properties and uh, investment. But it basically means that uh, any gains that you get when you transfer property for a transaction that involve some of those things I have mentioned, which there is a public interest into that transaction, you're exempt from capital gain tax. It is very hard uh, for some people to understand, and it is very rare for some people to experience some of these situations. But those are 11 exemptions to capital gain tax. Please go back to our website, keep looking, 
And we don't remember some of these things, a lawyer can be able to explain to you and handle the transaction on your behalf. But you need to be aware so that when you sell the property, you can actually tell the lawyer, check whether I'm exempted from capital gain tax. How does it affect your real estate investment? We also said we want to tell you. Number one, every time you increase any taxes in this country, they usually impact the income levels of people. Right now we are talking about the housing levy and many other taxes. They basically affect your pay sleep if you are employed. You receive less money and even on the goods that you buy from uh, the supermarkets, you may need to buy less because you have less disposable income. There is also the possibility of a slight uh, increase in prices of real estate. If you increase capital gain tax, if you increase housing levy, increase all manner of taxes, what happens is that the business people and the developers may, be, may decide to increase a certain amount to be able to cover themselves against the effect of those taxes. What I mean is they have to push the cost to the buyer. That's what happens in so many markets. So that means that uh, the properties might become more expensive to cover that tax or that cost in some segment. It does cut, doesn't cut across board, not all properties, but some properties may be uh, prices may be increased to cater for that tax. But I would also like to tell you about real estate. Real estate is extremely resilient, unlike shares, bonds, stock, and all these liquid asset classes. Uh, real estate is a bit resilient. Prices rarely go down, especially in a country of ours because the, the fundamentals are good, the population is growing, urbanization is there, and people need really a high need of affordable housing. We have a shortage of more than 2 million. Because the fundamentals are good, real estate is very resilient. Even with increased taxes, we don't expect the sector to keep going down. It will keep going up because the need is so big. So that tells you even with the increased taxes, I keep telling you, you have to keep investing. Keep investing, keep investing. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, ask questions down there. And please uh, turn on the notification bell there so that every time you have this video, you will be notified. Thank you so much for watching Real Estate okay. in Kenya with Ruben Kimani. We hope to see you um, the other week on Thursday. God bless you.